Hi there, this is Gary Ryan Blair, and today I want to talk to you about a subject that's near and dear to my heart, and it's all about doing brave deeds. So let's get after it. See, I don't have any tattoos. However, if I were to get one, it would have to meet certain criteria. It would have to be a symbol of strength. It would have to tell an inspiring story, and it would have to be unforgettable. Something like this. Fact, fortia e patua. Translated from Latin, it means do brave deeds and endure. Now, of all the known virtues, bravery and courage is the staircase upon which all of the virtues step. And without bravery and courage, all of the virtues, well, they become vices. Now, the conceptual opposite of courage is cowardice, which means we're therefore confronted with the reality that we either habitually practice bravery and courage, or we habitually practice cowardice. Now, just think about it. What good is a conviction about honesty or fairness? if no willingness exists to habitually put them into action when faced with adversity. Of what use is a code of ethics that hangs on the wall, unimplemented? What good is a vision, a core set of beliefs, values, principles of any type, if you don't have the courage to enforce them habitually? Bravery and courage are unique in that they take on the forms of every virtue at its testing point. So let me explain. When bravery and moral courage is tested, they manifest themselves in the form of character, honesty, respect, responsible behavior, and compassion. And when cowardice is tested, it presents itself in opposite forms to include bad character, dishonesty, disrespect, irresponsible behavior, and a lack of compassion. Absolutely no gray matter exists when it comes to bravery and moral courage. Bravery and courage are universally admired virtues. As every culture, religion, philosophy, and school of thought is dependent upon their implementation, and subsequently, it breaks down without it. All habits and muscles are strengthened by use, and courage is no different. And through the process of practice and repetition, we can learn to become brave and courageous. Likewise, all habits, skills, and muscles atrophy through lack of use, which means none of us can afford a bravery nor courage deficit. Yet, that is the biggest deficit that exists in most people's lives. See, physical and moral are the subsets of bravery and courage. Each is unique and each is intertwined. Physical bravery encourages the willingness to face serious risk of life or limb instead of fleeing from it. It is the firmness of one's resolve that confronts danger or extreme difficulty without fear and with resilience. In very real terms, physical bravery and courage in modern society has been replaced with ease, convenience, and security. Rarely will we be called to exercise physical acts of bravery and courage where once we were faced with dark, mysterious, and uncharted frontiers. We now experience each new journey in clear and precise detail, which is evident in the use of global positioning devices, which provide a guaranteed safety net. Even at wartime, when the truest form of bravery and courage is tested and found, advanced technology and weaponry used from a safe distance has significantly removed the necessity for physical bravery and courage. And while technology can be used to reduce or even offset acts of physical bravery and courage, it is up to each one of us individually to perform heroic acts of moral courage. And that's what I want to get into. See, moral bravery and courage is best defined by firmly and confidently facing mental challenges, crises of conscience, and ethical dilemmas that could harm one's reputation, your emotional well-being, your self-esteem, and other intrinsic characteristics. It is doing the right thing even if it's unpopular without flinching or retreating. It's refusing to idly stand by while others engage in unethical behavior. See, moral bravery and courage is, in fact, moral excellence. See, moral bravery and courage is concerned with the defense of the intangible. It's not property but principles. It's not valuables but virtues that moral bravery and courage rise to defend. Acts of moral bravery and courage carry with them risk of humiliation, of ridicule, contempt, unemployment, and loss of social standing. And the morally brave and courageous person is often going against the grain, acting contrary to the accepted norm. For many people in this world, the rule is, in order to get along, you go along. But for the morally courageous person, that philosophy is absolutely unacceptable. See, there's risk associated with the moral courage, but that's exactly the point. If you do not risk defending your principles, you're guaranteed to lose them. And in my book, that's a risk not worth taking. One of the most virtuous aspects of moral bravery and courage is that it can be practiced by anyone regardless of age, gender, physical ability, or surroundings. 
A child could stand up to his or her peers in defense of a principal in the same way her parents could. A physically challenged person can fight for what's right, just like anyone else. See, the type of courage you must call on in business and in life is primarily moral, it's not physical. It's commonly displayed in a steadfast adherence to fundamental values. Moral bravery and courage is a necessary element in the ethics equation, as without bravery and courage, you cannot possibly demonstrate values with complete authenticity. An absence of bravery and moral courage leads to moral decay, as greed, selfishness, and stupidity takes over. There will be a growing disdain and a contempt for your services, which is never healthy for your future. Without bravery and without moral courage, all virtue is fragile. While many people may admire, profess, and even look for it in others and ourselves, most hold it cheaply and surrender it without much of a fight. And remember, behavior, behavior never lies. And without the courage to act, virtuous conviction is completely meaningless. Without a doubt, we must have the moral courage to defend our convictions. And if we lack the courage to hold on to our beliefs in the moment of their testing, not just when they harmonize with those of others, but also when they confront opposition, then they're superficial and they add nothing to our self-respect or our society's respect for the virtues that we profess. See, we can admire virtue and we can abhor corruption, but without bravery and courage, we're highly vulnerable and easily corruptible. Aristotle, probably the greatest philosopher and thinker of all time, said a simple method could help. He said, if you wish to learn a virtue, any virtue, Simply practice the virtue in every situation where that virtue is required. In other words, if you wish to develop the qualities of bravery and courage, act brave and courageous even, even when you're afraid. More emphasis needs to be placed on bravery and moral courage, as the true heroes in our families and our neighborhood schools, boardrooms, and elected offices are those who habitually practice acts of moral courage. Now you understand. Well, my first tattoo will be Fact Portia Alberta. <laughs>